swear to God. What's with Perot? In Israel. I love it. <laughs> it's crazy. Ted Turner changed the world. He's a big fan of Is he? He would uh, serve you, Captain. No, I mean, I don't know. Only surprised. He's ready. What's he gonna? What's he got left in life? The game. I, you know, after you're elected, think about it. No dope. That's for sure. <laughs> Great guy to work with. Too. Amid a continuing allegations of tabloid reports pointing to extramarital affairs, Arkansas Governor Bill Clinton is this noon campaigning across the South. Hello, Mike. Everybody in America who's had problems in their marriage who either wound up divorced or who got back together votes for me. I'm a shoe in Can you hear me? I figure if everybody in Maryland who's ever had trouble in their marriage and they're still together or who's ever been divorced votes for me, I'm a shoe in Hello. Uh, hello? And you know, if every American couple who's either been divorced or had problems and stayed married, votes for me, I'm a shoe-in for re-election. I think the American people are smarter than the pundits. Before Clinton was shooed into office, he had to compete against a host of other Democratic candidates. The media focused on four of these candidates, but Larry Agron was a fifth candidate the press did not report on. There's no makeup here? During the 1992 U.S. Conference of Mayors, the New York Times reported that, quote, dozens of mayors seem to agree on one thing. The single candidate who truly understands urban needs is Larry Agron, unquote. They promised to bring this stuff over. None of the networks mentioned Agron's presence at the convention. I thought if I run over that super saver. One of Agron's staff had to run over to the Super Saver and buy some makeup because the network had broken its promise to provide it. This was typical of the media's treatment of Agron. When he appeared at this Democratic candidate's forum, this Associated Press photo simply cropped Agron out of the frame. During the New Hampshire primary, the TV news reported the polling numbers of the top five Democratic candidates, Brown, Clinton, Harkin, Kerry, and Songus. When Agron moved into a three-way tie with Harkin and Brown with 2% of the vote, most of the TV news didn't mention Agron. The day Bill Clinton captured what may have been the most valuable airtime of the entire election, as he spoke to 50 million viewers about his alleged affair, was the same day that a poll showed Agron's support at 4%. He had passed Brown and was the fifth leading candidate. When ABC's Sunday Evening News reported this poll, they simply deleted Agron entirely by not reporting his candidacy. During the New Hampshire primary, Agron's only live commercial TV appearance was through this satellite feed to ABC's Nightline. But the Nightline program wasn't directly about the election. When Agron complained to news executives about his lack of coverage, he was told he had not earned the right to media exposure because he had not received enough media exposure. And on stage, the five major contenders for the Democratic presidential nomination. Although Agron was on the ballot in nearly half the country, he was barred from most televised debates, including this one sponsored by the League of Women Voters. He couldn't meet one of the League's main criteria, which was, quote, recognition by the national media as a candidate meriting media attention, unquote. Good evening and welcome to the Democratic presidential candidates debate on urban America. Agron wanted to debate on urban America, calling for a 50 percent cut in defense spending and the reinvestment of some of that money into America's decaying cities. We are going to be coming to you rather live from Lehman College and you'll hear a bit of a disturbance in the background, but we'll go on with that in any case. The disturbance is Larry Agron asking to be included in the debate so that he can explain his plans for defense cuts and urban revitalization. Bronxborough President Ferdinand Ferrer and Mr. President, I suggest you wait for just a moment till the man is quieted or chooses to quiet down. I respectfully request inclusion. All right, Mr. Mr. Agron was quickly arrested. 
His court date fell on the first day of the Democratic National Convention. During this campaign, but very little said about the problems facing America's cities. Tonight, we'll change all that. Without media exposure and the debates, Agron couldn't quickly receive federal campaign funds, and his candidacy lost momentum. Uh, you look all right on camera. What's that? You look all right. There's no much problems. Really? Okay. Yeah. Well, you just got a mustache that shows through here. Okay, Why don't you go get some stuff, Mike? Oh, yeah. There we go. <laughs> campaign funds. The Democratic Party refused to include Agron in the debates or speak to the networks on his behalf. Agron talked about his exclusion, saying, I've challenged my own party for its continuing complicity in Cold War thinking, Cold War rhetoric, and Cold War budgets. To restore order right now, there are 3,000 National Guardsmen on duty in the city of Los Angeles. Another 2,200 stand ready to provide immediate support. I, so to speak. Okay. You see? Fall. So to speak. Okay. Get on. You see? Get on. Fall. Oh, what abuse you can In 1992, the networks had their own solutions for urban decay. Everybody, this morning we are here looking for solutions. CBS looked for solutions at L.A.'s Martin Luther King Hospital. Well, a hospital like Martin Luther King can see more trauma than all of Western Europe does in a year. Mm. In fact, there's so much trauma there that the U.S. Army sends its combat surgeons there so they get a sense of what these very severe wounds were like. In fact, when I was in the Gulf War, a number of the senior combat surgeons had trained right here at Martin Luther King mm. Hospital. Dr. Bob, thanks. Before he went on air, part of Dr. Bob's diagnosis was cut out because it was too obtuse. Yeah, so what's your impression? I said, my impression is, you know, places like South Central LA around the country look more and more like real third world countries or third world countries without the hope. That is, they had no medical care, they had no real economy, and, um, they, and yet, in a third world country, it's developing. There's some onward development. There's some vision for the future. Well, you know, your, your impressions of the medical care are you talking about? Mm -hmm. I think that gets too obtuse. I'm sorry, I'm going to ask about the level of the, the trauma care here. 30. It's always been considered superior, has it not, to other parts of the country? Cook, yeah, 30 seconds. Yeah, it's the best, the best. You know, Can I, why don't I say something like that? Okay. Thank you. As the conditions of the cities became obtuse to the networks, they turned to the suburbs to render a verdict on the campaign. And later, I on the campaign, you will see and hear some of the suburban voters who may very well decide this election. Back now live from St. Louis, there is news far beyond this city tonight. In, uh, what is this, in Hawaii? Haiti. In Haiti, oh, well, they all look alike to me. In Haiti, a huge explosion leveled a three-story building in downtown Port-au-Prince. At least 15 Haitians were killed. Take a look at the roads leading into and out of Los Angeles. Lately, you see more taillights than headlights. A lot of people leaving this town for good. Where are they going? Anywhere else. Why? While the ethnically diverse cities were abandoned for the homogeneous suburbs, the networks created their own recipes for the melting pot. Make a note. Give it to Kathy, who may be the best at this. Since we're going to wish uh, people a happy Rosh Hashanah, which is my idea and a good idea, just don't forget to check when Ramadan is. We have to wish all of our Muslim friends happy Ramadan. And then behind that, when you get to the Buddhist New Year, the year of the rat or the year of the monkey, whatever it is, we have to... We want to, we've got to be politically correct here, pal. After four Los Angeles police officers were found not guilty of assaulting Rodney King, the TV news moved away from the residents of L.A. and into the sky with 13 television-equipped helicopters. No justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. I'm sorry, we're, we're still hung up in our court here. Um, they're just marching up and down the streets, and they formed a big bulkhead here at the end of the, at the corner. 
The distant coverage in the sky was emulated on the ground by the scarce street reporters who tried to glide by without speaking to the protesters of the verdict. With the chants, no justice, no peace is what they're chanting. No justice, no peace. You can hear them now. No peace. We can still go in here. No peace. No justice, 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 no peace. We ain't got men to change, people. This should never have been a change of venue. There should never have been a change of venue. No justice, there should no never have been a change of venue. And as a result, no this is what you have. This is what you have. There's not clips down here. There's no bloods down here. There's just concerned citizens down here that don't like the way the system is done. This is what we're talking about. Could you tell me, sir, could you tell me? Could you tell me? The police are closing in. They're part of the law. They're part of the law. You did that. They cut us. The voiceless scenes from South Central L.A., where nearly 50% of the children live in poverty, was contextualized by the $600,000 a year TV news anchors. As the looting goes on in a senseless fashion, people arguing for sanity on the one hand, simultaneous looting in a random fashion for things that people can't even use. Twenty-five years ago, the media's coverage of the riots in the Watts area of Los Angeles was called racially divisive by the federally empowered Kerner Commission. The commission was formed in order to find the root causes of the urban violence of the late 1960s. It found that one cause was the massive economic collapse and poverty of the cities. The other was the media. The Kerner Commission found the media guilty of failing to communicate to all ethnic groups the complex and fundamental problems of race relations. This L.A. news anchor made these comments moments before reporting the verdict in the second LAPD beating trial of Rodney King. Okay, I'm standing by, ladies and gentlemen. We don't have shit to say. We don't have anything to do. But by God, the management of this company deems it necessary that I come on the morning and shock the shit out of all of you. In just half an hour from now, the jury in the federal Rodney King beating trial will be back in session. The Kerner Commission said media's failure to communicate was caused in part by the media's shockingly backward hiring practices. Hardly any people of color worked as TV news directors, the people who set policy and make decisions. Television responded to the criticism by hiring cameramen, clerks, and makeup artists that were African American, Latino, and Asian American. For each of these ethnic groups, the number of TV news directors is a few percentage points above zero since the Kerner Commission's verdict 25 years ago. You, you announced that they get rid of their gates tomorrow and they'll stop tomorrow. You announced that. As the networks covered over the voices from L.A., the candidates told the story of their own. I felt anger. I felt pain. I thought, how can I explain this to my grandchildren? And given the fact that this is a presidential election year, it's also a challenge to the man who would challenge the president for the country's leadership. Of course, everyone knows the old rhyme. In 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. We know his voyage took him to the New World, and his arrival changed the world forever. But beyond that, much about Columbus remains the subject of some dispute. During the celebration of the 500th anniversary of Columbus's discovery of the Americas, the only satellite feed I found with a Native American guest was this feed to a local morning talk show. The guest is a historian and a member of the Cherokee Nation. Yes, you, you said he presided over the over death of a quarter of a million people. No, that yeah. wasn't at his own hand. That was well, others who followed him and over, disease over, and that sort of thing. No, that he couldn't control, no I'm it? talking about like his first two years here, a quarter of a million. It's pretty well documented. He took uh, his interpreter.